Hi, my name is Siavash Irani. I'm a senior solutions architect with the AWS team. And in this video, I'll show you how you can monitor EC2 Windows instances using Unified CloudWatch Agent. With that, let's see how it's done. We are going to cover why do we need to use Unified CloudWatch Agent? How does Unified CloudWatch Agent work in Windows? What are the steps for setting up Unified CloudWatch Agent? And at the end, we will have a demo on how this is done. So why do we need to use Unified CloudWatch Agent? Monitoring is an important part of maintaining and reliability, availability, and performance of Amazon EC2 instances. When you launch an EC2 instance, by default, you can see metrics for things like CPU, network, and disk. However, there are some metrics that are only visible to the guest operating system, and it's important to monitor them. These are things like memory usage or page file utilization. Also, in some cases, we may need to monitor application-specific metrics, like metrics for SQL and .NET. Also, not only we should monitor resource metrics, it's important to monitor logs so we can see if something out of normal is happening on our EC2 Windows instances. For example, if there is too many failed logons to the Active Directory domain, or if IIS is generating a lot of 500 errors or things like that. Also, because you are uploading everything to CloudWatch, there is no need to set up a log server or monitoring server. With Unified CloudWatch Agent, we can accomplish all of these monitoring needs. How does Unified CloudWatch Agent work in Windows? After you install Unified CloudWatch Agent in Windows, it creates a Windows service. This Windows service reads the configuration file, and based on that, it sends the metrics or logs to CloudWatch service. Please also note that this service works on 64-bit versions of Windows 2016, 2012, and 2008. So what are the steps for setting up Unified CloudWatch Agent? First, we need to create IAM roles. We will discuss what each of these roles are used for in the next slide. Second, we need to download and install the agent on the instance. This can be done manually or using AWS Systems Manager. Third, we need to create a configuration file. This can be done manually or using this, the CloudWatch agent configuration wizard. And also, we need to store the configuration file somewhere. We can either store it locally or in AWS Systems Manager parameter store. Fourth, we need to start the agent while pointing it to the configuration file. In this demo, we are going to use AWS Systems Manager for installing the agent, storing the configuration file, and starting the agent. Let's look at these steps in a little more detail. So for installation, we are going to use AWS Systems Manager run command with the AWS Configure AWS Package document. This document can be used to install AWS packages, including Unified CloudWatch Agent. Please note that instances which are going to execute run command on them need to have an IAM role with the following policies. First is the Amazon EC2 role for SSM. This policy enables the instance to communicate with the AWS Systems Manager API. This allows Systems Manager to install or configure CloudWatch Agent. Second is CloudWatch Agent Server Policy, which provides permission for reading information from the instance and writing it to the CloudWatch service. After we execute the run command, the unified CloudWatch Agent files get installed in the instance. Next, for creating and storing the configuration file, we need to connect to an EC2 instance which has an IAM role with both Amazon EC2 role for SSM and CloudWatch agent admin policy. The reason for having Amazon EC2 role for SSM policy on this instance is because similar to other instances, we are going to use AWS Systems Manager to install the agent on this instance. The CloudWatch agent admin policy provides permission for reading information from the instance and writing it to CloudWatch with an additional permission of writing to SSM parameter store. Because of this, we should be careful with this role and only assign it to the administrator instance that is going to save the configuration file in the parameter store. After connecting to the administrator instance, we run CloudWatch configuration wizard and answer the wizard questions so it creates the configuration file and at the end, the wizard prompts us to save the file in a parameter store or local. Next, for starting the agent, we call AWS Systems Manager run command, 
with the Amazon CloudWatch Manage Agent document, which is made for configuring CloudWatch Agent, and we point the CloudWatch configuration to the saved configuration in Parameter Store from previous step, and we run it against the instances which we want to be monitored. With that, let's see how this is done in the demo section. Okay, so for the demo, I've created two EC2 instances. One is running a web server using IIS, and the other one, uh, I call it administrator. This is the instance that I'm going to use to create the unified CloudWatch agent configuration file. So first, I need to create the IAM roles and assign it to these instances. So from services, I'm going to open IAM console, and I need to create two roles here. So first, I click on roles, I click on create role, I choose EC2 here, and then first policy, which is uh, going to be applied in both roles is e EC2 role for SSM, and the other one is CloudWatch agent admin policy. I'm going to select both. I'm going to call it CW admin here. Make sure to give it a good description. Uh, and here I'm leaving it blank and create role. And I'm going to create another role and that's for my um, servers which I want to monitor for my web server. So EC2 role for SSM and also CloudWatch server, agent server policy. And uh, just a quick note here, if you look at the uh, admin policy and the uh, CloudWatch admin policy and the server policy, they're very similar except the admin policy gives you option to put parameter under uh, AWS Systems Manager parameter store uh, and it basically gives access to any parameter that the name starts with Amazon CloudWatch dash. Whereas the other one, it only, uh, this AWS CloudWatch agent server policy only allows it to read from this parameter. I click on next review, call it CW uh, server. Again, I'm leaving this blank, create role. Okay, now I have the IAM roles uh, ready and I just need to attach them to my instances. Now I'm going to open EC2 console to attach the IAM roles. So click on instances, right click on my administrator instance, attach or replace IAM role, I choose CloudWatch admin. And for my server, I'm going to click on attach or replace IAM role and choose CloudWatch server. Okay. Next thing, uh, I want to open Systems Manager console and I should be able to see the instances under Managed Instances. So from Services, I'm going to open Systems Manager. I'm going to click on uh, Managed Instances and uh, here you can see both instances are showing up here. That means I can manage them using AWS Systems Manager. Next thing is uh, I want to install uh, the CloudWatch a Unified Agent on both of these. So I click on Run Command and from Run Command, I, I choose Configure AWS Package and Action is Install. And make sure to type this uh, in a case sensitive format. So it's Amazon CloudWatch Agent. And I hit the latest there and I choose all these servers. I don't want to uh, out, output anything to S3 for now. And I hit run. This should install uh, the CloudWatch agent on both of these instances. Okay, now uh, both of these instances have uh, CloudWatch agent installed on them. Next thing I want to do is connect to my administrator instance and uh, create the configuration uh, file for my CloudWatch agent. So, I, I've already made an RDP connection. This is my administrator instance. And if I go under C program files, Amazon, Amazon CloudWatch agent, uh, you can see that this is basically the agent files that were installed. I'm gonna open a command prompt here and run the uh, CloudWatch agent config wizard. So Amazon dash. Now the 
config wizard is gonna uh, ask you a couple of questions and based on that, it's gonna create the CloudWatch agent configuration file for you. So uh, yes, I'm running it on Windows. It, it's an EC2 instance, it's not on-prem. And I don't want to use that statement for now. Um, do you have any existing CloudWatch agent configuration file? No, I don't. Do you want to monitor any host metrics? Yes, I want to monitor sure per CPU per core as well. And uh, yes, I want to include the EC2 uh, dimensions in my CloudWatch metric. And for now, I want to run it every minute. And this part, uh, basically what it means by basic, standard, and advanced, we have some predefined uh, metrics that you can uh, b basically specify in your configuration file. Uh, for EC2 Windows, if we go to this documentation page, you can see that basic is memory percentage committed bytes in usage, page file, usage percentage. Standard has memory, page file, processor, physical disk, logical disk, and advanced. Uh, has also, you know, uh, TCP connections uh, uh, established as well. Um, of course, this is uh, the default uh, that's going to create and pre-configure it. You can modify these yourself in the configuration file afterward. For now, I'm going to choose uh, just a standard here. And it creates the configuration file. You can see that all those things that I specified are here. Next thing, uh, yes, are you satisfied with this? Sure. Uh, do you want to monitor any customized log files? So in here, because it's a web server, I want to sp uh, specify my um, IES log path. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, put the IES default logs here for the main website there. And remember here, I'm specifying star.log uh, so it knows what type of files to look for. And uh, default choice, I can call it uh, for the log group name, IIS logs. And do you want to specify any additional logs? No, I don't. Any Windows event logs? Sure, yeah. I want to uh, have my system logs and verbose, and I want to capture all of them into CloudWatch. And log group name, I can call it Windows system events. And in which format? For now, I'm going to just leave it as XML. That, that's fine. And do you want to specify any additional Windows logs to monitor? No, I'm done for now. And uh, this is a part where it saves the configuration file into an into parameter store. And it's recommended because uh, when it's saved into parameter store, then you have one centralized location which you can always update uh, this configuration and apply it to multiple instances so it's more scalable and easier to manage. I'm going to choose yes. This is also important. Uh, remember that the name that I'm specifying here starts with Amazon CloudWatch dash and that's uh, what we saw in the IAM uh, policy uh, which allows uh, basically the instances to access this, uh, this path in parameter store. So uh, I'm going to leave it the default and I'm in US East 1. And this is the temporary key from the IAM role associated with this instance, which has permission to write to the parameter store. And done. So now the configuration file has been created and also it's been saved into a parameter store. So if I go back into EC2 console and click on parameter store under, uh, under AWS Systems Manager, we can see this parameter that's created and it has all those configuration that we specified during the wizard. With that, we are ready to start the agent on these instances so they can upload their logs and metrics to CloudWatch service. I'm going to click on uh, run command and run a command. Here the document that I'm looking for is Amazon CloudWatch starts with that, so make sure it, this is case sensitive, so put the right name there. Uh, I'm going to choose the Amazon CloudWatch dash manage agent. Um, and then here I'm configuring uh, the agent. The mode is EC2 and uh, I'm getting the configuration from SSM parameter store. And the name for that was um, Am uh, Amazon CloudWatch 
windows. That was the name of the parameter store that we had. So I'm gonna specify this here. And optional restart basically after it points the agent to the configuration file, it's gonna automatically reset it. Uh, and then I'm gonna choose my web server. And I don't need to specify any logs into S3, so I hit run. And this will configure the agent with that configuration and also after that, it should start uploading logs and metrics to be specified to the CloudWatch service. Okay, now it's complete. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is to open the CloudWatch console and see the results. Okay, um, from services, I click on CloudWatch. And if I click on logs, you can see already IS logs are here for that server. And um, also we saw the system event logs and you can also see the metrics uh, under CloudWatch agent here. But uh, one thing I wanna also show you here is the IS logs. Like if I connect to my uh, IS default page on that instance, and uh, of course the logs in the backend are, are being uploaded. But if I uh, generate some uh, logs that are not valid. Let's say I, I point this into a test uh, HTM which does not exist and I get a 404, then what I can do is if I go to CloudWatch and uh, I can actually filter for 404 errors and we can see that, uh, you know, uh, those uh, kind of ba bad uh, connections here. And what you can do actually is you can create metrics based on these and get alerted, for example, whenever there is too many uh, 404 connections uh, coming out of from your server. Now you should be able to monitor these two Windows instances using Unified CloudWatch Agent. Hope it helped and thanks for watching.